room, so now I think I might have to be longer. Uh, but welcome, welcome here, whether this is the first time you're joining us for one of our public lectures or whether it's, uh, uh, what is it now, maybe the fifth in the uh, so. series? Does someone count? Yeah. Does that sound about right? Uh, but either way, we want to really welcome you here to St. Stephen's University. And uh, we're really excited about this. We're excited uh, to be hearing new perspectives. We're excited to be um, having a new level of interaction with um, people uh, in the town and, and farther afield uh, to welcome you all here uh, into our doors and to, to hear these things. So uh, tonight, we're, we're uh, very excited to have you, Mackie, sharing with us. And I'll let Lois do the most specific. Yeah, just in time. Um, welcome again, everyone. And uh, I will just introduce you quickly. And Hugh is a friend. Um, we've worked together on some committees. Um, we've enjoyed um, mutual interests around coastal livelihoods in this area. I've uh, got to know Hugh and uh, feel very comfortable calling you a friend, and uh, I hope that's mutual. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. Um, Q is the chief of the Passamaquoddy and uh, First Nation, um, and he's going to talk about Passamaquoddy, the journey, close journey continues, which seems very appropriate in terms of the overall content of the course, and as we learn more about First Nations culture and history, uh, it's a great time in the course to hear about this this territory and its significance and its future and some of the struggles and some of the <coughs> achievements uh, as we look to the future in terms of um, carrying on as uh, friends and allies and First Nations peoples in this area. So I'm very pleased to welcome and introduce uh, you, Chief Hugh. Certainly, when it sounds so personal, I represent a people. I'm, what you see here is actually the face of a people. I'm not an individual. This is not about the apogee. And I'm so proud of the fact that uh, the real face of the people is sitting in front of me. And I'm going to introduce him to you. This is heart and soul of our tribe. And uh, don't pretend you're shy because <laughs> I know better. But. <laughs> There, there are certain people that, when you need them, they're there. And that's what Wayne does for his people. And I, I can't even begin to tell you how important it was that time you came from your cancer treatment, you welcomed the airway up the Bloody River, you sang a song called the Quantus Conflict Song. That was such a great, powerful moment. So this is the man that can do it all. So it's almost embarrassing that I'm here presenting, and that's what he's here for. He's, he's going to put pressure on you. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's all right. I, I'm always nervous. I buckle under pressure. Uh, it's not easy. I have to deal with governments and uh, all sorts of weird people. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. This is going to be a pleasure. <coughs> this is going to be a treat. But when we start it off properly, Wayne, would you do the uh, opening for me? Whatever you want to do. Please invite me, and thank you. Opening for the uh, tobacco receptor. We and have that. And I can do an opening prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we just wanted to present you with this uh, small representation of our uh, acknowledgement and appreciation for this new password program. Could mm -hmm. you do one? Thank you. Thank you. It's customary for us to uh, open all of our gatherings uh, with uh, gratitude to our Creator. And so, if the Creator has given me another language to speak, I will deliver that in my own language. And uh, I very seldom translate. I ask you to, to uh, pray and translate whatever sounds you are hearing from me in your own way. And I'm sure with all of that, our Creator will, uh, will acknowledge all that. I, um, I've got to tell you something before we start. Last week I had an episode with my heart, and my heart decided to want to stop. 
And then at the last minute, it started up again, and I was in the emergency room. <coughs> and so my thoughts about that was that the Creator still had something for me to do, and that's to come to listen to you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so will you stand up and pray with me, please? Is your own? She will live on. Is your mother any egg, ma'am? Kiss car. Will you want to know? Will you mill egg? Up to keg you, mouth swagging. Would you skis your gummick to eat wag? Then a little boy may have in the look at eating. See there would win aid, he'll gizzy off. See there would win aid to Gwesimon and to Gwesimon. When a bemlog with that one was well to Mutiban, it was a Ole Oyeg, it was a million your dark milk, it was a million as to Mokadi, we go to the Juda, not going to talk with you. We'll leave in an Ayuk Tip Sil at Lagaki Mujik, I think, St. Stephen University. Everybody will understand that. She will be one. Pauniak, the Ganda Bastuan and Zakum, you Akaji. Get the edict, would you come on Miss Honig attic? Let's see, get the edict. No less wealth, multi been come much. She will be one. Thank you. I'm going to sit in the back with my wife. start you off in your world. PowerPoint, <laughs> maybe uh, a few good points that we can uh, work on, focus on, talk about later. Uh, you know, we have a pretty good rule. Anybody that tries to sneak to the back and sit down, we usually say there are empty seats up front. <laughs> <coughs> Young people, nobody listens to me. <laughs> okay. Pastor McCoy, I'm not going to go into any detail. I think you have some idea. I've been here before for some of you. And I apologize if you've seen a lot of this presentation before, if you've heard it. I just ask your patience. But let's go for a ride. Okay. This is where I live. And this is the home of the Pastor McCoy. Here's your corner phone book right there. Thank you. So you've already heard from Grady Nicholas, Leslie Freda, you've heard from Joe. You've heard some friends are pretty good people because you've got a good mixture of you're in a hurry. Oh, sorry. Of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll stick here, Pesca Bakoni and Lenu. Anyone know what Lenu is? It's the knickknack name for themselves. Mm -hmm. It means the ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So having heard from all these folks, and by the way, next week uh, you're going to hear from friends of the. Uh, even the body people here. Two weeks. In two weeks, is it? Sorry. Next week, it's Yes, you're right, long. you're right. Uh, so, Maria Recchia, who I work with in uh, interesting ways, and uh, along with that's the connection I've had with Lois as well. Eric and Margaret Tuskin, they're incredible people from the, uh, 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 actually, they're from the United Church, and, and an awesome task group that they put together to work toward justice for Native peoples. So, uh, and there are a lot more. There are a lot more people who have helped us along the way. But the reason I like to focus on these folks is because when Burnt Church was a, a, a very, it was a powder keg. It, it, it was a tinder box. It was ready to explode. They went among the, the Mi'kmaq people on their boats <coughs> to make sure nobody harmed them, and they were treated as badly as the natives including their equipment being destroyed, manhandled, etc., etc. They were called the observers. But what an incredible people to go and do that, to stand beside the Native people, to actually uh, uh, support their treaty right. Thank you. Ah, so, what can I contribute with all that 
great native content, and since you've covered all the native topics, so in my thinking, I thought maybe a course on navigation. So if you're patient with me, here's what I want to navigate you through. I usually suggest a suite of topics, so we quickly go through them. There are things like treaties, Indian Act, United Nations, tradition, TEK, traditional ecolo ecolo ecological knowledge, ATK, Aboriginal traditional knowledge, multiculturalism, residential schools, Supreme Court, books, literature, history, archaeology, litigation, legends, territory, governments, corporations, corporations of human rights, which I think is an interesting concept. Then there's education, de-education. How about media? Alcohol, suicides, land claims, reserves, rights, human, indigenous, and native rights. Doctrine of discovery, how about the Royal Proclamation? How about colonialism, loyalists, how about language? Ancestors, relatives, Mother Earth, digital poet property, consultation, status, bands, band numbers, I put that wrong, I should have been band numbers and band governments, potlatch, RCMP, divide and conquer, clear cutting, artists, vocalists, bounties, smallpox and blankets, trapping, buffalo, species at risk, Sarah. Agreements, land claims, settlement, gatherings, traditional foods, traditional medicines, sovereign chief, middens, peace, and friendship. Genocide, abuse, foster homes, religions, and spirituality, heat and wellness, diabetes, DNA, recognition. These are just a few subjects, in case you <laughs> I know you cover them all because, again, you've been through this, the native presentation so far. So, if I expand on a couple of them, just let's take a look at treaties. There are modern treaties, there are pre-confederation treaties. The pre-confederation treaties are just like treaties such as Peace and Friendship, Treaty of Utrecht, Watertown, Supreme Court decisions. I'm not loud enough. Looking for my green tea. I don't know what I did with it. Okay. Uh, Wayne lost his tea. I tried my report there. Oh. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt it. See, I told you he was. <laughs> that was on purpose. <laughs> he, he, he looks after his people. He wants me to breathe. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> so, pre confederation, peace and friendship, treaty of your track, Watertown. I know you know all these things, but the Supreme Court decisions. <laughs> How about Sparrow, Marshall, Marshall II? How about Peter Paul, Delgama, Corbier, Jay? How about Chilcotin? <coughs> Bernard, Sillaboy, Simon, Polchus and Paul, 1980. Paul and Polchus, 1988. <laughs> Bernard, Sapier, Sapier and Polchus. Bernard, again, Sapier and Gray, Darren Paul. A lot of these, by the way, are New Brunswick. So any one of these could be a, a course in native law. Most are local. I told you a lot of those are from the, this very province. But how about the United States, Australia, New Zealand? They all have decisions, court decisions, that are relevant to court cases in Canada. And by the way, what do they have in common with Canada? I'm asking the questions here. Commonwealth. What is it? The Commonwealth. Mm, not quite, but very close. by white people. Yeah. <laughs> Colonialism is the word I was looking for. So, yes. And the idea of colonialism, and, and that brings us back to one other thing. Four countries did not agree to the UN Declaration when it, at the first time. They, I know they changed their minds, but they're the four countries, the colonial countries, because Native peoples the impact they had on Native peoples, the destruction they had on Native cultures, and the displacement is what they don't want to talk about. So, let's go. So, how about governments? I told you I have to deal with governments. In Canada, the federal government, I have to deal with INAC, DFO, Justice, DOE, Natural Resources, Transportation, CIBA. How about Immigration and the local MP? Provincially, I have to deal with Aboriginal Affairs, Justice, Archaeology, transportation, natural resources, education, and the local MLA. Canada still has a couple more governments I need to deal with because there's municipal government and there's LSD. 
And then you go outside, and there's the British government. Maybe you should explain LSD. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's lysergic acid. And the idea, no. LSD <laughs> is called um, local service district. I thought it was good for them to think for themselves. <laughs> and you notice not one laugh, so they were, this is where they get politically correct. They try to be polite and think, this guy talks drugs, but we're not going to laugh at him because he's an Indian and we're not going to let him laugh. Okay, so meanwhile, the British and the original treaties, because we signed treaties with the British. Those treaties, peace and country ship treaties were not signed with Canada, not signed with the United States. They were signed with the British. So it's important that we remember we still have that relationship with the British. How about France? How many of you realize uh, that in 1699, there was a peace and friendship treaty signed with France between the passing party and the French? The United States, and there you've got to deal with the states, which is uh, turning into a total nightmare. Anyone from the reserve will tell you that. And municipalities, and that's municipalities in two ways. Municipalities in the way that we have to deal with communities such as Calais, but also in the way they treat Passamaquoddy communities because of the land claim. They'd like to think that we are now dealing with municipalities. How about the United Nations, the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples? How about 192 member states? 193 if you visit Wikipedia, and I don't know why. But 192 member states, that's pretty good to agree to something that's supposed to serve the rights of Native peoples. Hasn't been implemented. It's not law. <coughs> That's another story. How about Native governments? AFN, I, and I'm throwing these at you, and I know you don't understand all the acronyms, but you really don't want me to, to hang around and start explaining these things. AFN, Assembly of First Nations, Atlantic Policy Congress, that's the group, uh, the umbrella in New Brunswick or the, in the Maritimes. UNBI, Maui, FN, CNB, APC, Aboriginal People's Council, these are just ones that you'll find in New Brunswick. Ever wonder why we can't get together and do anything? Have a look. Mm. Okay. And if I took another category and discussed books, you notice it's going to have to close your ears because I keep hammering away at some of these. Stolen continents. Inconvenient Indians. I can, I can quote authors and I can get you that information. You can Google it. Check me out. But these are the ones that have made a difference to my life. I have lived here since the world began. We are not the savages. One and two, Daniel Paul. A sorrow in our heart, Red Cloud. Bury my heart in the knee. And the Arenda, last year's Canada Reads, a great book. It's based on nonfiction, even though it's fiction. And then there are other books. So you can never read too many books. That's what I meant. The Blank Slate, 1491, Charles Manley, 1493, his other second book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Why would that be important? <laughs> this is a great book. It's yeah. so <laughs> epic. I didn't know you wrote about it. I do. It's the Zen part. Yeah. And it's, a, it's an incredible story. But Gandhi's biography. If you want to find out how to defeat the most powerful man in your world, because that's what he said. I am the most powerful man in your world. And he looked at Gandhi and he said, but you make me powerless. He had to release him. And he did it without weapons. He did it by making his own clothes and by harvesting salt from the sea. Not bad. How about Martin Luther King on leadership? There's no reason why we need to suffer. <sighs> what was his name? Mr. Harper. When there are real leaders out there in this world. It's not hard to find them. Understand your oppressor. Read the other books. Bushwhack. The Corporation. Party of One. How many of you realize that the Corporation actually has human rights? You knew into that, didn't you? Thank you. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, I always like to put in a plug for Massey Lecture Series again, sorry. But uh, 2003, Thomas King and Truth Vote Stories. Incredible native. 2004, Ronald Wright, A Short History of Progress. How about 2009, Wade Davis and the Wayfinders? All of these are very special. There are reasons we can talk about later. 
And I was supposed to tell you that if you feel like you have to leave, don't hesitate. I know it can be a long night. If you want to break down afterward and have questions, I'll stay here all night and talk your ears off. But the truth is, if you have to leave, don't hesitate. I'm not going to be offended. Thank you. How about the media? Mainstream media. If you like the sensationalism, the anger, the hate, etc., that's what you listen to. But there are others. I listen to Democracy Now!, my wife likes to listen to Global Research, Press for the Truth, Corbett Report. There are other stories out there. And some of them actually are real. <laughs> so beware, because the media has the capacity of defining who we are. And I use something called real engines. How many of you are familiar with that one? Just a little 15 minute video. Okay. <coughs> yes, I'm in another world. Okay, how about Hawkeye and Chingisco? Dances with Wolves, Last of the Mohegans. I know you've heard about these. How about Powell Trail, Smoke Signals? Yes. Real cute videos, aren't they? Yeah, there's probably more truth in those than there is in all the others. How about Incident at Oglala? Story with, that's narrated by Robert Redford. It's about the Pine Hill Reserve and the, the problems that were there. <coughs> Again, I find those very powerful. Okay, and finally, 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 we get to, I, I think I'm supposed to talk with Pastor McCordy and how the journey continues. So, the journey I, goes back to Canada asking me to do their research to prove that we exist because the story starts with, it doesn't really start there. I just finished talking to somebody about a 13,000 year old site that it's got to be the beginning of not just our people, but the Mi'kmaq and the Malice in this territory. So 13,000 years is a pretty good history in this place. And most of you know where it is. It's in uh, Penfield, the just the side of City Cove. It's going to be an awesome dig. It hasn't even started yet, but it will be soon. But it's pretty good evidence of our history here. But Canada, in its wisdom, decided we don't need the past Passamaquoddy because the story goes something like this. We'll take the land, drive out the people, and they'll say they don't exist. So they, we had reserves. We have reserves in Canada. They're on your books. And these reserves say that the Passamaquoddy own land here, have title to land here, and they try to make it disappear. Now, <coughs> the good thing about government is they're not very good. <laughs> and they're, they're kind of awkward, they fumble around, but they document it. Sorry, Tony. I'm not talking about the province. I'm talking about the now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, they, they document everything, but they blunder through it all, and then they try to go back and redo it. And this is what they've done with our reserves. So they've muddled it badly enough that they can't fix it. And, and as a result, they're still on the books under passing point. So we still have land in Canada. They say we don't because they've sold the land. Okay, but that doesn't mean that this can't be fixed. So how do you fix it? Well, we don't recognize you, so we can't talk to you. How do we have a conversation about fixing something if you don't see us? Well, if you have a chief and council, we could probably talk to you. So we did. We have membership in the states, we got them together, we held elections, they elected a chief. It was supposed to be temporary, and uh, I'd like to think sooner or later it will be. But right now, I've been chief since 1998, we've been working on the issue with Canada, and actually things, they go through cycles. You see, your world evolves around elections. And when we started, it was rough going. But then it smoothed out. A fellow by the name of Andy Scott was the Indian Affairs Minister. Andy Scott took a look at us. This is guy was this guy was the top lawyer in Canada before somebody taped the conversation behind him on a plane <coughs> and got him fired. But this is the top lawyer in Canada. And he he called me out one day. I was at a uh, in a, uh, a celebration on the St. Mary's Reserve. And he saw me. And he sent three people to get me. It's not like a story from the Bible. Sorry, sister. But <laughs> he did. This guy was great. 
He was determined he was going to talk to me. So the third guy took me by the hand, led me to the front of this room, which should be embarrassing. But at the time, everybody was trying to shake hands with the prime minister. But I knew that the guy up here was the one I needed to talk to. So he said to me, he said, I've read your story. He said, I've looked up the, the evidence, the proof. And he said, you're right. You do exist, and I'm going to help you. So he was going to work toward getting us into banned government. That's a problem. I don't like banned governments. Banned governments are not native, and are good for natives, and as far as I'm concerned, all the problems that are going on in reserves right now, the corruption in communities, the dysfunctionality of a lot of things that are happening are a result of bad governments. We had good government. One of the people I quoted you up here, Ronald Wright, said there's another story on how it was formed. It wasn't Canada saying, oh, if we if form a bad government, we'll talk to you. It goes back to the RCMP enforcing banned government on six nations and hanging three chiefs to prove their point. That's a story that's in no record, it's in no history book, but it's in the Vatican archives. And Ronald Wright got in there and he wrote a book called Stolen Continents. And that's why I think you need to read that book. It's not like any history you'll ever see. It's not from the mainstream. It's not in, it's not in grade eight readers. I picked that on purpose because they tried to corrupt that by getting somebody in British Columbia to do a great grade eight reader and they forgot to put in the native people here. I think there's one page on the Malice. Andrew Bernick was caught up to it, embarrassed the government enough that they had to redo the reader and include stories on native people. So sometimes I forget what I was talking about. Andy Scott. Andy Scott, thank you. I better wrap this up quickly because I could go on for a long time about Andy Scott. He didn't last long because Paul Martin's government got the boot. I've been dealing with conservatives ever since. That's been a, a bit of a nightmare. It's been off and on. It's a love hate relationship. But the Indian Affairs team that were behind me, or were supposed to be supporting me, uh, and proving that the past quality exists. Think about this. You've got a government that has done everything they can to destroy you, everything they could to destroy the evidence, everything they possibly could to make sure that you don't exist. And so they asked me to prove that we exist. And the options are yes or no. So I said yes, we'll do it. And here we are, that was in 2005, when I last spoke to Andy Scott, on, on that, as, uh, in the position of Indian Affairs Minister. And I've been working on it ever since. And just recently, somebody blinked, and it wasn't me. So I'll tell you more about that story. But just to get back to Andy Scott, Andy Scott died uh, uh, a while back, uh, a couple of years. And a lot of people don't realize, but he used his position as a lawyer. He tried to use his friendship with the people he had known in uh, Indian Affairs, and he was helping me right till the day he died, and I didn't even know he was sick. That's a pretty incredible person. It changed my opinion of politicians because, again, he could do that. There's a good politician. You were. I have no doubt. And so was Andy Scott. There, there are some that have integrity. There are others that, um, I, won't, I won't mention names. But it should be embarrassing that they're actually elected to represent us. And that's not what they do. So that whole system itself has problems. And that's the system I was trying to work in. So when Indian Affairs sat with me the last time, because our research, it, w it went through more through a lot of processes. And the last one was to hire um, a consulting group to organize all the information we had. I had this incredible lawyer of the Six Nations. His name is Paul Williams. <coughs> you want a guy that can think outside the box? Paul Williams. He's won incredible cases in Ontario because he's made settlements that nobody could pack possibly envision. And he put people together that everybody thought wouldn't happen. He put them in a room 
and he got them to talk. Once you get people to talk, it's amazing what can happen. The thing was, they wouldn't even get in a room. So he's managed to do this for a number of cases, and most of his are settled out of court. Because the Joe Cohen case, that last uh, court case I mentioned to you, the Supreme Court case, $10 million. $10 million. Dalgamook, 25 years. I don't have that time. I don't have that money. So, how do we get there? We find a Paul Williams, and Paul gets right into the back doors. He knocks on everybody's door. So the only reason we are where we are is because of this man. And he's got us to where Canada, that team that they put together, and that I thought we were fighting for so many years, actually said, we're going to come in behind you. They got the, the information has to go to at least one of the claims groups. So it went to the specific claims fellow, a great young fellow, smart young fellow. Asked me the tough questions. Loved it. And something broke with his relationship because he thought I wouldn't give him information. But when I have information on the tribe, and the only reason I have it is because I said I would not let it out. Because it's personal information. But I needed it for census. They gave it to me. So when he says, I want to take it to Ottawa, I said, no. He said, I'll protect it. I said, no, you won't. He said, then you're, you're withholding evidence. I said, no, I'm not. What can we do? Well, I said, you need to see it. Yeah, you said I can't have it. Yeah. You can see it. You, it's okay if I look at it. You can see it. Not Ottawa. I'm not putting it in your hands. They passed legislation last year that said if it's in his hands, the RCMP have it. The Minister of Indian Affairs, everybody has it. Because Mr. Harper made a law that said whatever is in somebody's hands is passed to everybody else's hands. And he says he'll protect it. I said, no, you won't. So we invited him to sit down with the material. He took one look at it and said, it's all here, isn't it? And I said, yep. I'm behind you. The third guy, Justice. He's the big key. Got a break. The guy that wanted to fight with everybody. I had to ask for time out between his, this lawyer and my lawyer. Asked him if he could treat me like a human being. I'm in the room and he wouldn't even talk to me. And he put his head down and he said, Yeah, I can do that. He changed, became a very nice guy. Started to help us. He got bumped from the system. I lost him within a year. But they brought in this other fellow. And the other guy sat down, and the first thing he said, I start every meeting with something. I remind them that I have treaty rights, constitutional rights, inherent rights, indigenous rights. I remind them, because that's important. And he looked me in the eye before I even started the meeting and said, Yes, I know you have treaty rights. And yes, we know you have inherent indigenous native rights. And no lawyer from any government has ever said that to me. And he started the conversation that way. And then the lawyer from the local branch in Amherst came up to me and he said, he said, I, I haven't helped you, but he said, I know you're right. And he said, within two years, you're going to win. That was two years ago. So right now, it has to go to government. Something else happened. Something called an election. During an election, nothing gets done. That's what they told me. Well, that's not true. <coughs> they were doing things. They just didn't want to do certain things. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to have anything done for me. I understood that. But right after the election, something changed. Something happened very fast. I got funded. I've never been funded so fast. I never had to fight for this one. And what usually turns out to be, I don't know if you're used to contracts, but there were three pages of deliverables for every contract I put in. And this one had one little box and it says work towards sovereignty. I'm still not sure what it means, but that means I can now hire a lawyer. 
They wouldn't let me hire the lawyer before, but I made him the head of my research team. They had to pay him. But I wasn't allowed to talk to him about the claims. Now I can do that. So something has changed. And I think the delay, I could be wrong, and I have to ask this of them directly. I think the delay may have been intentional because if they could hold my claim from going to the Conservative government later, and then it goes to the new Liberal government, which said they're going to be more understanding, which said they're going to have a better relationship with Native peoples, then I think they may have done it on purpose, and they may have done me a favor. So for some reason, we may have friends in the room. Remember that slide? I'd like to think we have friends in the room, and I'd like to think they're going to help us, and I'd like to think that this recognition thing is going to go on go through, it has to go through. We're not going away. Think about it. 13,000 years and we're going to pack our bags and leave? Mm -mm. Sorry. Ain't going to happen. But I'd like to see it done in my lifetime because I've been putting a lot of pressure on the young people saying, you know, you got to fix this. We broke a lot of things. You've got your work cut out for you. But I have more faith in you than I do in my own generation. Do you realize that we're the first generation that's going to leave things behind in worse shape than any other generation previous. Mm. Things have always been better from generation to generation. That's what we're supposed to strive for. There's a fellow, Giroux, did a CBC interview on ideas, and he talks about how this is the first generation where you've got things worse than when we started. That's not a good record for us. But that's what we're leaving with. Sorry about that. So, I think I'll just wrap up this part of it. Uh, well, Wayne, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe we say goodbye. I think we say okchich, which means we'll see you again. And again, I'm reminding you, we're not going away. We're going to be here. And I like that back to the future. I think about that a lot. And that came out just a, a week or so ago, wasn't it? The date they picked in the future is now. <laughs> but it's not really now. It's in the past. So don't let them separate those things. Don't let them say that the past is the past. We can't go back. Don't let them say that you're looking too far into the future. Don't. You tell them that everything is now. Everything we need to do is now. Everything we, we need to do it, we have it now. All it takes is it takes a little willpower People have to stop lying. That's a big part of what's wrong with this world. You know, if you tell the truth, they can't find fault with you. But if you tell a lie, then you have to reinforce it with another lie. Think of where that gets you. Always tell the truth, stick to it, and they won't be able to knock you down. That's really important. So, I just wanted to end with that same picture because we're basically back to the beginning, the beginning of the slide, but the beginning of the story. And I'd like to come back to the beginning of the territory where we were in the picture. We've always been in the picture. This is uh, Sapayak over here. I, the stand site is just over here. This is where, where uh, uh, one of the main bodies of the tribe is. This is uh, Indian Point in St. Andrews. It's hard to explain to them why it might be called Indian Point. Because right now what they're doing is they're developing every inch of it as fast as they can. Because if they think we're coming through the door, they want to make sure that they have it locked down as Fee Simple. And Fee Simple destroys native content. Then we can go to all sorts of things. The clear cutting of the woods. How can you be an Indian if you don't have any trees? Think about these things. Because the trees protect other things. The trees protect what we call relatives. You know what we mean by relatives? Yeah. All the other creatures we share the planet with because under the Mother Earth, there are relatives. If we're going to really protect these things, we better get busy because the clear cutting in these woods is ridiculous. And guess what? They won't talk to me about it because we don't exist. They don't recognize us. They have, that's their excuse. That's all it is. 
It's not real. If it were real, I wouldn't be standing in front of you. We exist. They know it. But they also are willing to lie about it so they can control the clear cutting in the woods, they can make all that money they want, they can destroy whatever they want. And that whole omnibus series of destroying the waterways, the environment groups, and the uh, environment department, DOE, Department of Environment. What do they have left? Two scientists? They wiped them out. All that needs to be fixed. And you know another thing? They can fix it. And Wayne and I have a solution for what they can do for us. Because they say that, you know, well, there's nothing we can do. I mean, that damage was all done in the past. No, one of the things they destroyed was language. You're, you fellas, you're miracles. Because they, the reason they put it on reserves was so that they could destroy the language. But it backfires because the reserves are where the bastions, the, the bastions of our culture are. You put a bunch of people in one place that speak the same language, <laughs> guess what? And you can stand there as much as you want and say, you're not allowed to speak that language. I know they, they beat people. Freda was here. Did you know Freda can't have a door in his house? Because they stuffed him in closets so much when he was in residential school. And I know he's got an alcoholic problem. But I'm not going to blame credit for that. So, they did all these things. Didn't work. We're still here. But I need, I need something from each and every one of you. I need you to know that you, you're pretty good. You've got a lot of great things. You've got a lot of great resources there. We talk about Wikipedia. You have Google. You have some pretty incredible things. Don't let them destroy your libraries. I put books up there for a reason. They're, they're destroying books. And I'm going to take you back one more step. Natives didn't need to store their knowledge in books because we had something better. Mm -hmm. We had what we call elders. We need to protect every elder. We need to protect the language in the elder. We need to protect the knowledge in the elder. And he'll move that on. But we have to help them. And we have to make sure they don't destroy that. That was what they were after. When they were trying to destroy families and when they were taking, uh, destroying, taking children away, everybody thinks, oh yeah, the poor child. They destroyed the family. They just lost their children. Why do you think? And, and you know what they gave us in your place? In your place? Alcohol. Think about it. It doesn't take brain, what do you call it, uh, rocket science to figure out that this whole thing that was designed to destroy the culture it's no, there's no accident. No apology is necessary for what they did. Because the apology doesn't fix it. They can take this fellow, give him a school, and say, now teach the language. They've got the money. They've got the resources. And we've got the other. You think they can't fix that? It's the bloody right they can they have to have the will to do it. I basically wanted to end my talk. I could talk about the past quality. I've told you about the, the situation with Canada. It's an ongoing story. That's the ongoing journey I was referring to. It's, uh, it's going to have a happy ending. But we have to have patience. I told everybody that giving up is not an option. All of these things are real. But it takes a lot of good people to do a lot of good things to make sure that good things happen. And all of these things that are happening with the environment, Sister, you're right. Native people are a key to getting them fixed again. I mean, if you want to talk about sustainability, it's a great word, isn't it? I worked in the government of Canada. I worked with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. We, we talked about sustainability. You put that on a page as many times as you could, and you've got a contract. That's what sustainability is. But 13,000 years in one spot, and when the Europeans arrive here, and they say, we have discovered paradise, that's sustainability. Don't let them redefine it. What did uh, Mr. Manning say about Mr. Harper? He thinks they're only words. 
Well, they're not only words. They're dealing with real people, real lives. We've got to start putting trees back in the woods instead of destroying them. Don't let them clear cut the way they're clear cutting. You know, there's, there's no reason why they took real people out of the woods. They talk about jobs. Let me tell you about a machine that harvests 1,040 trees. Is that in a 10 hour day? Something like that. You can work it out, it's on the net. Because in 40 seconds, 40 seconds, one of those harvesters can cut down a tree, delimit, take the bark off, and cut it into 16 foot lengths. 40 seconds. How many men with chainsaws in the woods, making a good salary, would, would love to have that job? And what kind of damage could they do? And these things, by the way, are going 24 hours because in order to pay for that machine, which is a million dollars or something, they have to run it two shifts. So the guy hires one other person. They put lights on it. They have a, a truck. I've seen this. I've seen it suddenly. These, they have these creepy crawlers. It's not just one, but they have them going to, and they're just cleaning everything. And they don't even bother to leave riparian strips now. Have you noticed? They go right to their eyelid. I'm going to tell you something else too. I understand that they're, they're even cutting on the islands. This is a killer. Those islands are what protects this bay. If they destroy those islands, then they're going to go through something that happens on, right now on Lennox Island to the Mi'kmaq. They have a reserve called Lennox Island. It's probably the biggest Mi'kmaq reserve on PEI. So, they looked up one day and the storm surges have cut a hole through the sandbar that protects that island. They've changed the... They said that probably in a hundred years those storm, storm surges were going to cause them to lose, lose their uh, reserve. When that hole appeared, that cut the time in half. They have 50 years now to move. And the reason the storm surges, we can talk about global warming, we talk about all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be a native thing to realize that things are wrong, that we need to fix them. But those storm surges, the gulf doesn't freeze anymore. So the waves are hitting the back of the islands. They've tried to, to put breakwater up. Every time they put up a breakwater, this planet doesn't realize that they're not supposed to hammer things. So it goes around and hammers the next community. So they found that they were causing more damage down the road. So the government said, sorry, not gonna do it anymore. We just gonna have, have to let nature take its course. And within at least 100 years, if not more, PEI will be three separate islands. These aren't my words. Look them up, Google them. It's not a good story. So, to get back to a, the native, native theme and the journey, I don't know what to tell you except uh, we do hope that sometime within the next year or so things will be fixed. What I need to do, what I really need to do is nail down something within a government structure. This, this may sound airy-fairy and impossible, but I, I have a, a story I'll tell you. I need to make sure that whatever we put in place doesn't become corrupt, because once we're gone, and by we, I mean the council is there right now. I have an incredible pe people behind me. We've, we've done everything we can to protect everything around us, and we've stood up to governments even while others have sold out. But when big money comes to the door, there are going to be people, number one, they want my job. There's a reason why they don't want my job, because they don't get paid. When the money comes to the door, everybody's going to want that job. And then guess what? So whatever we do, now is the time. I'm setting it up with a lawyer. We have to set up a government structure that can't be corrupted by money. Money's a killer. I know it can do a lot of good things. I know we need it, but it, it's a killer.
We have to protect ourselves in that. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you anymore. I think you should all go home. And if a few of you want to hang around and ask questions, I'd be glad to. And by the way, you can ask about any of that material. It's not that I know everything that's out there. I didn't do that to impress anybody. I just want you to realize that even though you heard from Graydon, who was really great with the justice system, or you've heard from Joe, who's really great with the, um, uh, the RCMP and the uh, police system, and Freda and Leslie, who know so much about the plants and the, uh, you know, the medicines, all these incredible things. This is the real story. It's everything. It's, it's all that and more. You could probably give me categories that weren't up there. But it's a web. It's a structure that when they start destroying all those things, why is it, just, just treaties, just treaties, why is it that we have an agreement with your government and I know people say that the treaty is not, you know, for the individual. But I'm sorry it is, because the treaties of peace and friendship, we, we only have to keep one little caveat in that, and that is not molest you and let you live here. So guess what? The proof that we kept the treaties, you're our proof. You're still here. We kept it. And by the way, we had to give back prisoners, but that was okay. And. Your obligation to the treaties is not to molest us in our lifestyle. What do you think? Star Trek, right? Don't impact a, uh, a developing society? How about the story of the board? You will be assimilated. They know what they're doing. And they've been, there are people that are telling them these things are wrong for years. But they're still not listening because it's money, it's corporations, it's all of the above. And I told you, and I saw you, the look I think on your face when I said that corporations have human rights. Is that you? Me? Yeah. I think I was scratching my head and you thought I was putting up my head. <laughs> <laughs> How many others knew that corporations had human rights? Yeah, a lot of people. Don't you find there's something wrong with that? Yeah. And they did it because they didn't think they could get enough out of the system, but they recognized that if they could get into human rights, they could access more <coughs> because that puts them in the courts. And the human rights were, made, were meant to protect black people. That's who they were meant to protect. <coughs> and because, of course,